Hey there folks, Boosh and the Rod coming at you with this week's beer review. This time we're going to take a look at a couple of different beers. We're going to take a look at the entire Sam Adams Nitro series. Now they've been putting a couple of other beers on the Nitro. I know when we go to the Extreme Beer Fest this weekend, we'll be able to get a hold of, I believe it's the American Creek uh, on the Nitro that they're bringing down there. So that'll be really interesting. So we're gonna, Hopefully. Oh, absolutely. There's going to be some good beers there. Oh, yes. So we're going to hit the Nitro White Ale first, followed by the Nitro Coffee Stout, and then the Nitro IPA. Now, most bars, a lot of people, and even, unfortunately, some brew pubs who should know better, will actually just line up your beers in a flight from light to dark. Yeah. It's a mistake. Your IPAs or hoppier beers should always come last, no matter how dark the beers ahead of them are. Unless, of course, you're looking at a black IPA or even a red IPA, um, then your darker beer is going to come last. Assuming, of course, that darker beer is an IPA. But the reason for that is because the bitterness of the hops will actually uh, overwhelm your palate a little bit. So if you're drinking an IPA and then you drink a stout, you're going to miss some of those more subtle tasting notes from the stout, the browns, or anything else that might actually have a darker color than the IPA. Right. So we'll go ahead and start off with the white ale. Um, I'm going to warn you, open this slowly, because when you crack it, what you're going to do is you're going to just crack the can without actually opening it. It's going to release the nitrous from the nitro widget at the bottom of the can, and then, just like that, we'll open it fully. So while we're getting these guys poured out, hit us up down below with a like and a share. You'll get a notification every time we post a new beer review. Hopefully you're getting some value out of them. Oh, look at wow. that. <laughs> it comes out so creamy and thick. Yeah, it does. And as far as I understand it, they're not really making a big change in the formulation of the beer itself. It's really just that nitrogen gas coming through, making smaller bubbles that effervesce a lot better. And I mean, look at that. You can see... There's a nice head on it, and this is a white ale, but there's still all this creaminess in through here, and that's all bubbles. That's nothing floating in the beer other than those nitrogen bubbles. Yep. So it should be a very interesting texture to these, at the very least. Getting some citrusy hints, and maybe some orange and lemon. Yep. Kind of, right in that. Smells good. Mm-hmm. We'll see how it tastes. More like a summer beer. Yeah, it probably is. Such a smooth mouthfeel. Yeah, it does. That creaminess and it's the not. look to it actually follows through in the mouthfeel. It's a very, very creamy beer. Yep, and it's not really hoppy. There's no bitterness. Actually, this is a good one to get drunk on if you really wanted to. Yeah, it's a very nice, easy-drinking um, it almost watered down, but not yeah. quite. Now, I say watered down only because it drinks so easy, like you said, but it, the flavor is all beer. Um, a bit of citrusy, light grainy. Um, yeah, like I said, more of like a summer beer, something I yeah. sit around and drink in the hot sun with a bunch of good buddies. Yep, me too. I'm going to throw away... Uh, Three and a half out of five at this, because it is a better than average beer. Well, it's not quite blowing me away. There's nothing really standing out for it. The texture, you know, I think the texture actually for me is going to push it up to a four, because it is a lot easier drinking, and that uniqueness uh, makes it a little more special than some of those other light uh, right. white ales for me. It really is a white ale you look at. It. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very, very... I mean, it's cloudy, but a lot of that is because of the, the nitrogen and the bubbles. But right. some of that is now that I'm looking at it, cloudiness in the beer itself, which is nice. But it is a very light, light beer. Very, very light. But it's not bad. No. I'd no. Probably, I'll probably give it about a three, actually. About a three? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Mainly for the same reasons. Uh, it's not really, there's not that, that flavor. I mean, it's a really, it's... I hate to compare it to the to, to Budweiser, but <laughs> it's actually about like that, but it's a lot better. In terms of drinkability, I, I could, drinkability and yeah. quick and easy. And yeah. Yeah. 
I hear you there. I understand that you're taking some of the few positives to a Budweiser beer yep. and equating it, so I'll, I'll let that pass. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to finish these up, and uh, then we're going to crack into the Nitro Coffee Stout. Well, that was refreshing. Yes, it was. Well, before we get into the next one, I just want to show you a little something here. This is the Nitro Widget that's at the bottom of the can. Hopefully that's coming through really well. Uh, by the way, don't do this. Cut aluminum cans are very, very sharp and uh, you can kill yourself with them, really. Uh, so, I tried to pull this little thing off of the bottom of the can just to see a little bit more of what it looked like, but um, the can edges are very sharp and this thing is stuck on there pretty good, so there was no way it was coming off. But somehow there is a charge of nitrogen gas in that little widget and when you open the can it's released into the beer. So that's pretty much how it gets there. Enough about that. Just in case you were curious, I just saved you the trouble of cutting open a can. You're welcome. <laughs> you, can, you can send all the extra nickels to me by clicking on a couple of ads here and there. Yep. All right. Here and there. Nitro coffee stout. Oh, I love a good stout. And a coffee stout where you can actually taste that coffee flavor is even better. One of these days they'll figure out how to caffeinate one of these so I can get buzzed on it, stay awake, and get buzzed even more. I'm sure they're already doing that somewhere. Oh yeah. All you gotta do is add some caffeine into it. There we go. There's that nice... Smooth, creamy-looking beer. And very dark. Awesome pour, again, from the nitrogen. Got a decent head on it, and just lots of little itty-bitty bu bitty bubbles that are making it look really, really cloudy. Fluffy. But, uh, yeah, like you said, it is very dark. I mean, even down here at the bottom of the glass, it's pretty much opaque. I can't see through it. I love a nice dark stout, so... Uh, a little bit of brownness in the head. It's not a, a white or gray head. It makes me think right. more of that coffee flavor is going to come through. And I definitely smell you coffee. Can definitely smell the coffee. There's a hint of chocolate there and yep. a little bit of sweetness too. But mocha. Uh, that coffee, yeah. It's mocha. Your mocha. Mocha, mocha, mocha. <laughs> this is going to be very good right actually. Now. Oh yeah. Nice oh, yeah. smooth creamy mouthfeel just like the other one. Yep. Um, it's actually got a, a lighter mouthfeel than a Guinness or right. a really heavy dark oatmeal stout, but it's still very satisfying. You heavy. can definitely taste the coffee. Oh, that's that's the primary flavor yep. in here. Oh yes. It's basically coffee and then just a nice roasted stout follows it up. Yep. Very nice. All in all, it's a, it's a nice, solid coffee stout, and um, at this point, it's really nothing special or, or, or great jumping out at me, except that texture from the nitrogen pour, um, which honestly is pushing this above an above average beer. Pretty much everything I try from Sam Adams, I feel, is above average, because it tastes like the beer that it's supposed to be within that style, but right. it's also uniquely different. Those two words are the same thing. I, I guess it's hard to express what I'm trying to say. It, it doesn't taste, a stout from Sam Adams doesn't taste like every other stout. Right. So this coffee stout doesn't taste like every other coffee stout out there. It's got a very heavy coffee flavor. But other than that, that that's what puts it at a 3.5 out of 5 for me with the, the above average taste. But it's the texture and the mouthfeel and that nitrogen pour that's actually pushing this one up to a 4 for me as well. Yeah. Um, even with my love of stouts, I, I can't really push it any further than that. It's a very good, very solid beer, though. Yes, it is. Very good. And I give it a four. Mm. <coughs> so you're liking the stout more than the white ale. Oh, yeah. yeah. It actually, because I like, I like coffee flavor anyway. Oh, well, yeah, that's probably helping. <laughs> I like the coffee flavor. It needs just a little more coffee flavor, a little more for me. I would like to see this kicked up a notch. 
in terms of the coffee flavor. I think that would take it to another level for me. But now we'll just drop a turbo shot in it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see what that does. It, you know, it might actually ruin the brew. Yeah. But there's only so much you can do to manipulate that coffee flavor in because that's true. Yeah, but um, without turning it into a non-beer. But I'm just gonna I'm gonna tip this up. Take another sip while I'm at it because I kind of have to. That's really good. Ooh. I took a nice long deep sip because I want you to be able to see what's happening with yeah. that glass. I mean, yeah, look. Notice, notice the coating. <laughs> the bubbles and the froth from that head. That is that you know is what that, amazing. You know what that's really like? It's, it's like a... Uh, uh, espresso. Like an espresso. <laughs> yeah. In this particular case, yes. Except we're seeing the same thing with the white ale. So I've got to attribute it to that nitrogen pour. But well, yeah, yes, that's what it is. It's, it's, I get what you're saying. It's like a frothed up express, <laughs> espresso. Yeah, we're right. But very good. We're going to finish this one off. And then we're going to come back and hit you up with the IPA. We'll see how that one goes. Action. Delicious. That was very good. Heavy. Dark, delicious. And coffee. Oh, man. I don't know. I'm almost full. I feel yeah, like I just of, had a, a, full of something already. a good meal, man. <laughs> you heard the expression about Guinness? Oh, yes. I hope you like Guinness, sir. I find it's a great substitute for food. <laughs> <laughs> it is, too. Well, you are pretty much drinking a loaf of bread when you, when you have beer. Anyway, any type of beer, really. Well, some more than others. Right. But, that's beside the point, because we're going to check out a Nitro IPA. Now, this one I'm actually most interested in. Uh, before tonight, the only one I'd really gotten into was the Nitro White Ale, so I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and the Coffee Stout was really a nice surprise. And the, very good. Exactly. The Nitro IPA, I'm pretty sure I've never had an IPA on a Nitro before, because most IPAs you want a thin, easy drinking mouthfeel because the hoppy bitterness is really just going to wreck your palate. Right. Um, if it's a heavily hopped IPA, if it's subtly hopped, eh, not so much. But most of the Sam Adams IPAs. Well, what that is this one? Recently, what does this one actually say? I think it's um. They're not going crazy with the hops. It's basically just an IPA in the sense that an IPA is an IPA. Um, that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, they're not really saying what was in their IPA. It's just yeah. saying, talking about the widget, the nitro widget. Jim Cook, founder yeah. of Boston Beer Company, yeah. Sam Adams, he, he's been uh, quoted many times as saying he's not a big fan of IPAs. But I'll tell you what, for a guy who doesn't like IPAs, he's running Makes a company. Some damn good ones. <laughs> produces some awesome IPAs. The Rebel series jumps to mind. Yeah. Um, Noble Pills may as well be an IPA. Based uh, on latitude forty nine, latitude forty eight, forty eight. Yes, that was that a good one. Perfect IPA, and all the different. Uh, my favorite latitude forty eight was the um, the twelfth pack, where they had five brews that showcased one of the different five hop, one of the five different hop varieties right. that went and brewed that went into a beer, yeah. and then just the sixth beer, well, there were two of each anyway, and the sixth right. item was a. Uh, just was the break of latitude 48, yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, that was a, an awesome experience. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> well, let's get back to the, the subject the at subject hand. The subject at hand. And we're going to get to the right for a while. Which is getting going. drunk. We are not getting drunk. <laughs> we are You like that sound, don't you? <laughs> oh, I love that sound, man. I, I'm going to buy that's what his stomach. So, that's what his to. stomach sounds like after he has Taco Bell. Mm, that's not my stomach, man. <laughs> You might think it's my stomach, but it's just me filling up your car with gas. <laughs> Nitro IPA is a little bit thinner than the others. Yeah, it's a little lighter. Yeah. Which is actually what an IPA should be. Yeah, I mean the IPA is all about the hops, so you don't really see... It's not nearly as cloudy with the bubbles. I mean the Nitro is definitely putting more of a head on there and effervescing more than a regular IPA would. Holy shit, dude. I must have poured mine too slow or too quick, but 
I don't know what you did differently. Did you give it a quick kick at the end? Or? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. That look, that's beautiful right there. Look at the head, <laughs> the bubbles, and this little cloudy layer here. I don't know what yeah. I did to fuck this up. And I'm the IPA guy. I should have gotten this right. Oh, well. I've got the touch. <laughs> you got the touch, all right. Or I am touched, one or the other. A little bit of both, I think. You got the touch. <laughs> anyway. Sorry, folks. The first two beers are apparently getting to me a bit. So. Actually, we can... Oh, yours can clarify real that. quick, though. Look at that. Well, we can see through it. Almost. Well, yeah, because it's an IPA. But it does have a nice brown tint to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It does have that nice uh, amber hue. Yes. You, uh... Yours cleared up real quick, though. You had a lot more bubbles in it. but Yeah, but my head's still strong. Yeah. That's debatable. <laughs> I think you're a little soft in the head. <laughs> and you can smell the hops. Oh, yeah. That's very good. That's oh, fruity. Boy. Fruity and citrusy. Yep. Normally, I find citrus paired with um, some piney notes, but this is very sweet, fruity, yep. and citrusy. Well, it was, like it, it was Sam Adams. Uh, I hear it on the radio a lot. A lot of the American hops mm. are piney and fruity. Yeah. Have they been talking about? They've, they've been breaking down. And that's actually what it, this is actually what this really smells like is a, is a real fruity and citrusy. Yeah. I'm not and getting a lot. Of not a lot of the pine, no, but it is still in there. It's almost like a, a real subtle. Yeah. Scent to it. With any well blended IPA, you're going to get some notes of the pininess, the citrus, yeah. the fruit, and the uh, the floral. But this, I'm not picking up any floral at all. And this, the pines was very subtle. A very smooth, hoppy taste. Yeah. It's not quite as as. Um, creamy as the other two. Right. I think with the IPA, the nitro doesn't make as big of a difference. Correct. But it is it is adding some texture to that mouthfeel that isn't there in most IPAs. Right. And it and it in most IPAs you can taste a very high amount of hops. Mm. This is not that bad. No, this is very actually young. very the, the hops, I won't say it's subtle, but it's just above subtle. <laughs> yeah. It's there. It's there. You notice it first and foremost. And there's no there's no real bad hoppy aftertaste yeah. either. It's not overwhelmingly hoppy. Right. And I think a lot of the, the IPAs and the hoppy beers that we've tried recently have been on the extreme end of the spectrum that where they're just trying to kill you with the hoppiness. I mean Stone's Ruin Ten. That was a beer that's just about, hey, it's hoppy and nothing else. And it's awesome. I love it. And the other thing about with oh, the hoppy beers, really you don't get that. You don't also get that this right here. Mm -hmm. You only get that pretty much from the from the nitro. Yeah, and I mean, and that's same as the others. It's sticking around too. Right. But not as much as the others. You notice it does right. sink a lot faster. And that, and like you mentioned, that they cleared up quicker too. Yeah. So I think the IPA it just isn't able to hold on to that nitro um, effervescence like the others are, but I still get even even with it looking like this, I'm still getting that slightly creamy mouthfeel to right. it. Right. Yep. For me, this one's coming in and at about a, a four out of five, and just because again, you know, it's a very solid IPA. It's well rounded. It's got yep. a lot of subtle hoppy. Yep bitterness and, and the different notes, the this piney <coughs> notes being very, very subtle, overwhelmed by the citrus and fruit, fruity notes, but it's got that slightly different mouthfeel than what I expect from a regular IPA. Right. It's creamy and smooth, and that's what's putting it above the above average rating that I would normally give any Sam Adams beer. I'm putting this at a four out of five. Yep. I'll put this at about a four out of five, too. That's cool. So we're in agreement yeah. on two of them. We had a four out of five for both this and the coffee, yep. Nitro Stout. The uh, 
from the white ale, we white. had a little bit of disagreement. I had a, actually a four, you had a three and a half, but... Right. Well, let's go back and check that. Well, I think I you we kind of... With, with that, I think you kind of bumped it up to a four, but... Yeah, I did bump it up to a and four. And I think so. I, I rated... I rated one of them as a three. I don't remember. I think it's. I believe it was the white ale. Yeah, it probably was. So yeah, I went. I think. Wow. Just because there wasn't much flavor in the white ale. Yeah, I. I'm just surprised I hit them with you know, fours across the board. I'm what I would sure actually like to see them do mm. is try some of their traditional. Their traditional ones like Boston Lager. The Boston and Lager and Nitro. That'd be a different right. experience. The Boston Lager, the Oktoberfest, and the Nitro mm. can. Just to see what it, just to see what it, what it would taste like. Yeah. And you know they call it Nitro Project, which hopefully means that this is not the end of it. All right. And when we look at the beer list for the upcoming Extreme Brewfest in Boston, I, like I said, I believe it's the American Creek. We're questioning that now, but there is a, a beer that isn't in this variety that right is now. going to That's be available on right now. A Nitro Tap at the beer fest. Now that just might be, hey, we're putting out a Nitro Tap. <laughs> or it might be, well, this is part of the Nitro project. Right. I'm, I'm, like you said, I'm hoping this does expand because I would like to see some of their uh, familiar favorites with the Nitro cans. Another thing, that, important thing to note is I'm not getting the can taste. Right. You know what the and can taste is. It, they've kind of, a lot of the places now, they've kind of done away with that. And they've kind of, yeah. they've figured out a, a good coating to put on the can to actually get, a, get away from that now. Exactly. And some of your cheaper <clears throat> beers don't care. You, right. They still get that aluminum or tinny and in metallic some, taste. In some cases, it kind of improves their beer. <laughs> Coors Light. <laughs> Bud Light. <Yeah. laughs> Bud Light. It, Miller Light. No, Miller Light's actually pretty good. But no, any one of those three, I'll drink on a hot summer Molson. day, and I'll take down a 30 rack on my own. I don't <laughs> give a shit. Molson or Schlitz. 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 <laughs> Jesus, nothing can help Schlitz. <laughs> You gotta bring that up every time you can, don't you? No. Mm. <laughs> Schlitz Bull Ice sucks ass, and it is not a fun experience, and it will ruin take your a, night. Take a look on the older videos, you'll see it. Yeah, it's under the Allens and Schlitz video. For all the crap I give you every week, I gotta at least acknowledge that that video does exist, and I am an ass. The only thing really is, so. is what? An hour long? Half hour long? It's half an hour of pure pain and suffering. But it was funny to watch. You might find it funny. <laughs> but anyway, that's the uh, Sam Adams Nitro Project as it stands now. Hopefully, more to come on these. We will cover them if they show up. Yes, we will. Till next time, folks. Yeah, hit us up down below with a like and a share. Subscribe if you want to get a notification every time we post a new video. Cheers. And, and tell your friends. Yeah, tell your friends. Keep drinking. <laughs>